And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show on a night where the Rangers added insult to an injury-riddled team. Rangers head home with four points in their luggage after wins in Vegas on Wednesday and in Denver, Colorado tonight. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios for the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show alongside Steve Valiquette. I'm John Giannone. The Rangers have one player on their team to thank for taking the extra point tonight, and it's number 31 in goal. He came into tonight off a one goal against effort in Vegas. He posts another one tonight, and Igor Shesterkin is back to being Igor. You're, you're dead on about that. And, and what happens in hockey oftentimes is the goalie steals a couple for you, and then as a team you find your way again. And this is something that oftentimes happens through a season because the Rangers, they've been scuffling, but they need somebody to be their rock. And Igor was that in this game. It, it was just so big for him to be able to stand up in the shootout and be able to be that guy. Be able to have a big glove that hovered over it. That's why JT Comfort can't score. Mika does a great job of showing his shot and then crossing the middle of the ice. Right-handed shots on that play from that distance. They love low glove. Lefty here, and that's the same idea, but doesn't cross middle and doesn't fool Shesterkin for a five hole. And then why does Panarin work? He shows his shot and then he crosses the middle of the ice twice. And he almost slows down to do it, John. But that was great for him because he was a big part of this game. You can see the emotion and it really wakes everybody up. And I think it wakes up their sense of belief too. For whatever reason, shootouts, uh, it's not for everybody, but I've always noticed that it really kills the morale when you lose. And it really brings the group together when you win. And you can just see it there. Everybody yeah. was pumped for bread. And I'm sure half the group went to Shesterkin as well. Yeah. But it does galvanize it. I don't know why. Maybe it's all the attention of the one-on-one. -on -one, but it always does seem to bring a group together. And realizing the extra point is that close to either gaining or losing. It was shootout turnabout from what we saw October 25th at the Garden when Alex Georgiev, who lost the shootout tonight, won back in October 3-2, the final for the Avalanche there. It was a night where Igor Shesterkin stopped 16 shots in the third period and overtime, five of them in the five-minute three-on-three. And again, he was only the second star of the game, bad choices by the people <laughs> out in Denver, because he, he faced 42 on the night and stopped 41 of them. Yeah. He has to be the first. Oh, you have to be. Yes, I agree. I agree. Uh, well, <laughs> the thing about the night for him, though, was that it was back-to-back -back games where he's able to step up. And when it comes down to it, the goalies want to be an impact in every game. 53 times, that shot right there in overtime, 53 times Shesterkin has faced that this year. He hasn't given up a goal. It's one of the only goalies in the NHL that hasn't been beaten from the slot on a clear view shot. But I love his setup right now, John. He did the same thing he did Wednesday in Vegas, which was set up on the puck. Mm. Now he's having some fun. And I just like the fact that he's back to where he was last year. That puck would have gone in. It probably would have counted off the yes. skate, off the shaft of his stick. But nonetheless, gets the Rangers through overtime and into the shootout where he still felt comfortable and he carried the success of his five on five game during the regulation minutes into overtime and then into the shootout. Yeah, so Igor Shesterkin gets the win now 13 four and four on the season. He's won two in a row. Rangers have won three in a row and it's two one the final in the shootout over the Colorado Avalanche. The only goal scored in the 65 minutes of full time. Braden Schneider, yeah. one defenseman in the NHL, has four goals since November 22nd. It's Braden Schneider, and he scored in the second period early on to tie the game at one. He's, he's about two goals away from getting a nickname, <laughs> You're right? Because any, anybody that comes in a league and gets hot like this, uh, it's really something to be had. But you know what I liked about John? He leaned into it. You know, and anytime there's transition from your own zone, it helps a lot where the defenseman that's playing net front has the intent to help and join up ice. You add the second layer. And the one thing I noticed with Braden was that he was very aware. And you keep an eye on him here because he's deep in the play. He's net front, he settles for a quick minute, and then he leans into it and he goes. But it's a great pass here from Goudreau off the wall to Panarin. And now the threat of Hedl doing the right thing here to go back post, this allows the Avalanche to believe the pass is going to go across the ice, which opens up the ice behind the defense. Schneider can skate into it. Everybody's laying all over the ice. The thing I got to say, though, is it's just it starts with being able to be confident there's going to be a second layer because Panarin knows that Schneider's coming because he gets the sense when they all lean into it and go that he's joined. 
That's the reason why it works. If Panarin forces a pass to heal there, it probably doesn't connect. Yeah. It was the ice that was given was the ice that Panarin chose to take, and it was a smart play. A look at that goal powered by HP and CDW from the CDW HP film room. Braden Schneider had two goals in 33 games last year. He has four in 29 this year. Moments ago inside the Rangers dressing room, Braden Schneider with his reactions. I think uh, the first period, we, we didn't like our first period. I thought uh, we were hesitant. We weren't getting pucks out. Uh, and uh, we weren't playing as fast as we wanted to, but I thought in the second we came out, we came out hard. We came out playing the right way. And then I thought that continued into the third. We started shooting more. We started getting behind them, and we started working them. And, uh, yeah, I think we could have probably got a few, but Georgie played good over there. Shesty was unbelievable for us, and, yeah. I feel like where the confidence level was as a team, go to now it's just kind of flipped completely yeah definitely I think uh, our confidence we're we're growing it every day and I think uh, when you start playing the right way and you you have success doing that it's you feel good about yourself and and uh, I think that's the main thing we're feeling good right now we're playing as a team and we're sticking together you got I think four goals in the last whatever it is eight or nine games just come in bunches sometimes like that sometimes I'm <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not my job but I'm, uh, I'm just trying to get pucks to the net and we have a lot of bodies who are going hard and doing their job too so it's a uh, it's, it's a good feeling to have them go in pretty amazing what less than a week makes right on monday the two of us sat here with henrik between us and yeah. talked about the disappearing confidence of the rangers team and the importance of that game against the blues three wins later now there's braden schneider talking about confidence growing more and more apparent every day. Well, that's how you turn your season around. Uh, it's experiences. The reason why the Rangers had a bad experience in the first uh, six weeks of the season was because one became two, which became three. You give away three or four leads in a month, and I believe it was four in total with two goals or more in November, then it becomes infectious in a bad way. It affects me. It affected me the way I was watching this game. I was saying that to you, John. I kind of felt like a, a, a loss, I said, the way it was playing out with four minutes to go. Why would I say that? It's because I've seen it in recent weeks, and now you start to think that way, and it, and it can really spiral for everybody. You know, your family and friends start talking about it. It becomes too much of a conversation. So you need a slump buster, and that's the effort you bring out in the second period. And then the third period starts to move a little bit. Igor steps up and plays a terrific end of game. But that's what you need. And now your most recent experiences start to be favorable, and you put a run together. That's mm -hmm. what these, this is the streakiest we've ever seen the NHL yeah. right now. We've seen comebacks. We've seen failed. It's just the wildest hockey we've seen. So, yes, this is something the Rangers can put together now. We saw the Rangers give up four to the Blues on Monday in a win. They go on the road to Las Vegas and Colorado, and they give up two in 125 minutes. Ryan Lindgren, a huge part of that, as you would expect. Here he is after the game. Thanks, Ryan. What was the message of the team after the first period? Uh, just not good enough. Um, you know, we knew we could play better. I thought we responded better in the second and third. And, um, but yeah, the first, obviously, wasn't our best, but... Uh, Got back to our game, and <clears throat> obviously Shashi was great throughout the whole game. Even with so many injured players they have on their roster, there's still a lot of high-end talent. What was the specific things you had to look for from guys like Rantanen and Nichushkin? Yeah, obviously a lot of high-end skill. Um, you know, they got a lot of defensemen that like to join the rush and, and make plays. So, um, you know, we just we just had to make sure not to turn pucks over and feed into their transition, and I think we did a better job of that in the second and third. Uh, good West Coast Western trip, two wins, and makes three wins in a row. Uh, has it? do for the team's confidence yeah it feels good obviously um, you know we're hoping to get on a little roll here and um, yeah it was a good trip for us um, you know played played pretty good for the majority of it and uh, we just got to keep it going at home Brian Igor didn't want to take too much credit but I mean 41 saves tonight it, it felt a little bit like last season where he was seeing a lot of shots and, and really kind of bailed you out in some in some spots so how do you feel about him tonight yeah he was fantastic uh, from start to finish he made uh, made some huge saves even with one second left he made a great save on uh, the back door um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're used to it at that point. He's an incredible goalie, obviously. And, um, yeah, he was dialed in tonight. And, uh, yeah, the, the fellow's really happy for him. He's been hard on himself at certain points. I mean, did, does it feel good for you guys to see him come through in a, in a way like that where he leads the team? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously for us, we don't want to put him, put him under that much pressure and give up that many chances. But, uh, yeah, obviously we're really happy for him. And, um, you know, he was great all night. Three wins in a row just mentally. What can that do for the team? 
Yeah, it's a lot. Um, you know, we obviously feel good. Um, you know, it seems like we're, we're playing better hockey, and, um, you know, we just got to build off that and, you know, keep that going at home. Rangers now 9-4-1 and one on the road. The goal scorer with a celebration at one end, the goal stopper at the other. But a team win when all is said and done. 2-1 Rangers, the final in the shootout. Plenty more to come on the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame.